Very, very deep neural networks are difficult to train because of vanishing and exploding gradients types of problems. In this video, you learn about skip connections, which allows you to take the activation from one layer and suddenly feed it to another layer even much deeper in the neural network. And using that, you would have built ResNets, which enables you to train very, very deep networks, sometimes even networks of over 100 layers. Let's take a look. ResNets are built out of something called a residual block. Let's first describe what that is. Here are two layers of a neural network where you start off with some activation in layer L, then you go to AL plus 1, and then the activation two layers later is AL plus 2. So to go through the steps in this computation, you have AL, and then the first thing you do is you apply this um, linear operator to it which is governed by this equation to go from AL to compute ZL plus 1 by multiplying by the weight matrix and adding that bias vector. After that, you apply the ReLU nonlinearity to get um, AL plus 1. And that's governed by this equation where AL plus 1 is G of ZL plus 1. Then in the next layer, you apply this uh, linear step again. So it's governed by that equation, right? So this is quite similar to this equation we saw on the left. And then finally, you apply another ReLU operation, uh, which is now governed by that equation, where G here would be the ReLU nonlinearity. And this gives you you know, AL plus 2. So in other words, for information from AL to flow to AL plus 2, it needs to go through all of these steps, which I'm going to call the uh, main path of this uh, set of layers. In a residual net, we're going to make a change to this. We're going to take AL and just fast forward it, copy it, much further into the neural network to here and just add AL before applying the nonlinearity, the ReLU nonlinearity. And I'm going to call this the shortcut. So rather than needing to follow the main path, the information from AL can now follow a shortcut to go much deeper into the neural network. And what that means is that this last equation goes away and we instead have that the output AL plus 2 is the ReLU nonlinearity G applied to ZL plus 2 as before, but now plus AL. So the addition of this AL here, it makes this a residual block. And in pictures, you can also modify this picture on top by drawing this um, extra shortcut to go here. And we're going to draw it as uh, going into this second layer here because the shortcut is actually added before the ReLU nonlinearity. So each of these nodes here, right, that applies a linear function and a ReLU. So AL is being injected after the linear part but before the ReLU part. Um, and sometimes instead of the term shortcut, you also hear the term skip connection. And that refers to AL just skipping over a layer or kind of skipping over almost two layers in order to pass this information deeper into the neural network. So what the inventors of ResNet, so that would be Kai Minghe, Xiang Yujiang, Xiao Qingren, and Jian Sun, what they found was that using residual blocks allows you to train much deeper neural networks. And the way you build a ResNet is by taking many of these residual blocks, blocks like these, and stacking them together to form a deep network. So let's look at this network. This is not a residual network. Um, let's call this a plain network. This is the terminology of the ResNet paper. To turn this into a ResNet, what you do is you add all those skip connections, or all those short circuit connections, like so. So every two layers ends up with that uh, additional change that we saw on the previous slide to turn each of these into a residual block. So this picture shows five residual blocks stacked together, and this is a residual network. And it turns out that um, if you use 
you know, a standard optimization algorithm, such as gradient descent or one of the fancy optimization algorithms to train a plane network. So without all the extra residual, uh, without all the extra shortcuts or skip connections I just drew in. Empirically, you find that um, as you increase the number of layers, the training error will tend to decrease after a while, but then it'll tend to go back up. Um, and in theory, as you make a neural network deeper, you know, it should only do better and better on the training set, right? So the theory, in theory, having a deeper network should only help. But in practice, or in reality, having a play network, so not a ResNet, but having a play network that's very deep means that um, your optimization algorithm just has a much harder time training. And so in reality, your training error gets worse if you pick a network that's too deep. But what happens with ResNet is that even as the number of layers gets deeper, you can have the performance of the training error kind of keep on going down. You know, even if we train a network with over a hundred layers, um, and there are now some people experimenting with networks that are over a thousand layers, uh, although I don't see that used much in practice yet. But by taking these activations, be it X or these intermediate activations, and allowing it to go much deeper in the neural network, this really helps with the uh, vanishing and exploding gradient problems and allows you to train much deeper neural networks without really appreciable loss in performance. And maybe at some point, this will plateau, this will flatten out, and it doesn't help that much to have deeper and deeper networks. But um, Resonance has certainly been uh, effective at helping train very deep networks. So you've now gotten an overview of how ResNets work. And in fact, in this week's programming exercise, you get to implement these ideas and see it work for yourself. But next, I want to share with you better intuition or even more intuition about why ResNets work so well. Let's go on to the next video.